We once thought that astronauts would use the lush tropical environment of Venus to recharge their batteries and take a vacation. Well, boy, were we wrong. Researchers from multiple universities published a paper in the journal Nature Astronomy, announcing that they'd found a lot of phosphine gas in Venus's atmosphere. And it got people talking, because phosphine can be a biosignature. In other words, if you can find enough of it, that could mean it's being made by life. We now realize that the surface temperature of Venus is 900 degrees. That's hotter than a baker's Ooh. oven. Lead would be molten at that temperature. And when it rains, it rains sulfuric acid. But Venus should not be so hot. It should be warm, but not 900 degrees Fahrenheit. So there are many theories, and that's why NASA is going to Venus, to figure out why Venus is this oddball planet, this evil twin of the planet Earth, that it's so hot, much hotter than it should be. In recent years, NASA's renewed focus on Venus has opened up an intriguing chapter in the history of space exploration. Back in the 1960s, Venus was often described as a planet resembling hell, known for its extreme temperatures and inhospitable conditions. However, recent developments have sparked a resurgence of interest in Venus's mysteries, driven by the potential discovery of life on the planet. During the era of the space race, Mars took center stage as the primary objective, largely due to the Soviet Union's unwavering commitment to space exploration. The Soviet Union conducted an extensive series of 28 spacecraft missions to Venus, known as Venera in Russian, between 1961 and 1983. This period coincided with the United States' focus on lunar exploration, which played a significant role in shaping the subsequent course of space exploration history. The motivations behind the Soviet Union's fascination with Venus remain shrouded in mystery, with speculations ranging from considering Venus as a potential military outpost to contemplating colonization, given that these missions occurred during the Cold War. Despite recent disclosures, their true objectives continue to elude complete understanding. The collapse of the Soviet Union not only reshaped global geopolitics, but also shrouded many of its enigmatic secrets. Renowned for their penchant for secrecy and advanced intelligence agencies, they possessed a knack for concealing potential encounters with extraterrestrial phenomena. The Soviet Union's commitment to Venus missions positioned them as pioneers in the realm of space exploration. They conducted 28 spacecraft missions to Venus, with 13 of them penetrating its atmosphere and eight successfully touching down on its surface. While NASA primarily focused on technological advancements and satellites, the Soviets took the lead in exploring planets for potential signs of life. Notably, the Soviet space program achieved a multitude of historic milestones, such as dispatching probes into the atmospheres of planets beyond Earth and accomplishing soft landings on other celestial bodies. They also conducted the inaugural mission to capture images and sounds from the surfaces of planets beyond our own. Despite these groundbreaking feats, much of their achievements were concealed by a shroud of secrecy and archival data was regrettably lost or destroyed following the program's dissolution in 1992. The complexity of the motivations behind the Soviet Union's extensive spacecraft missions to Venus is one key factor contributing to the absence of a straightforward answer. One plausible explanation may lie in cost efficiency, suggesting that the Soviet choice to explore Venus was influenced by a desire for resourcefulness and the maximization of their endeavors. Nevertheless, a genuine sense of optimism pervaded the Soviet space program regarding the possible revelations on Venus, including the prospect of uncovering information about the presence of water, the intensity of solar radiation, and the broader planetary environment. Had it not been for the extensive missions to Venus, gaining an understanding of its extreme temperatures and dense atmosphere, 
would have proven to be a formidable challenge. Present-day consensus among cosmologists tends to be skeptical about Venus's potential to sustain life. The temperatures on Venus are scorching enough to melt lead, while water is scarce, and the atmospheric pressure is an astonishing 90 times that of Earth's. Nonetheless, it is of utmost importance not to underestimate the substantial role played by the USSR in the examination of Venus. Disregarding their efforts would be tantamount to erasing a pivotal chapter from the annals of history. For the Soviets, the exploration of Venus held strategic significance, even if it necessitated keeping pace in the space race. Although Mars, a more hospitable planet, was under consideration, the higher expenses associated with its exploration made Venus a more pragmatic choice. The considerable difference in distance between Earth and Venus, 40 million kilometers, compared to Earth and Mars, 250 million kilometers, significantly contributed to the cost differential. Speculation has been rife concerning technical challenges and reliability concerns within the Soviet missions. Their spacecraft design wasn't ideally configured for traversing vast astronomical distances, frequently resulting in communication loss. This could elucidate their emphasis on shorter, closer missions to Venus, where the likelihood of achieving tangible outcomes was considerably higher. Understanding the Venus missions within the broader context of the space race is crucial. The United States found itself initially trailing in the space race when the Soviet Union launched the first artificial satellite, Sputnik 1, in 1957. This historic event triggered a fierce geopolitical rivalry, as both superpowers vied for supremacy in all domains, including space. The Soviet space program exhibited remarkable speed and success in its endeavors, prompting the United States, under the leadership of President Dwight Eisenhower, to respond by enacting the National Aeronautics and Space Act in 1958. This momentous step marked the establishment of NASA and the formal commencement of the space race. This occurrence marked a significant milestone in American space exploration, symbolizing a concerted national endeavor and highlighting the nation's supremacy in this field. These successive events have left an enduring imprint on contemporary cosmic pursuits, shaping the course we observe today. Both the United States and the Soviet Union were propelled by an unwavering drive to achieve a transformative moment that would secure their leadership in the space race. NASA's iconic moon landing in 1969 stands as a monumental feat that not only contributed to their triumph, but also stirred significant skepticism. Interestingly, some Soviet space experts contended that the U.S. staged the moon landing to uphold its dominance, adding an intriguing layer to the narrative. Curiously, the U.S. initially faced setbacks with its Venus missions in the 1960s, which later earned the moniker Venus Curse. Each attempt to explore Venus ended in failure which the Soviet Union astutely perceived as an opportunity to gain an advantage over NASA. Fueled by their shared determination to clinch victory in the space race, both nations embarked on distinct strategic paths. The Soviet space program redirected its focus to Venus, as a domain where they could demonstrate prowess that their American counterparts had not yet achieved. Despite resource constraints and occasional mismanagement, they pursued Venus missions with unwavering determination. In contrast, NASA concentrated its efforts on moon missions steadfast in its pursuit of triumph. This dichotomy in strategy was not devoid of tension and propaganda. To mitigate their challenges with Venus, NASA leveraged Americanized popular media to undermine the Soviet Union's emphasis on the planet. Venus was depicted as a hellish realm, while Mars was highlighted as humanity's promising destination. Despite these orchestrated narratives, the Soviets remained under Territ, resolute in their quest for supremacy. 
The Venera missions, though often overshadowed, played a pivotal role in ushering in the Space Age. These missions commenced in the 1950s and persisted over three decades as part of the comprehensive Venera program. This coincided with the tense Cold War era, motivating the Soviets to maximize their resource utilization and harness their considerable lifting capabilities. It's essential to acknowledge the technological limitations of that era. Exploring planets within our solar system posed formidable challenges as the technology for outer space exploration and planetary landings was in its infancy. Despite the daunting obstacles posed by the dense atmosphere of Venus, the Soviet Union remained steadfast in its pursuit. Their commitment to advancing technology was unwavering, despite intermittent setbacks. They aimed to make an unequivocal statement with the launch of their first probe designed for the Venusian atmosphere, Venera 1, also known as Sputnik 8, in Western academia. This historic interplanetary flight, launched on February 12, 1961, weighed an impressive 1,400 pounds, showcasing the Soviet Union's mastery in spacecraft engineering and marking the maiden interplanetary launch. Unfortunately, a navigational malfunction precluded Venera 1 from reaching Venus, causing it to miss the planet by nearly 100,000 kilometers. Although Venera 1 did not accomplish its primary mission of reaching Venus, it offered valuable insights into the harsh environment of space beyond Earth. The Soviet Union's commitment to the exploration of Venus remained unwavering and they continued to push the boundaries of what was technologically achievable. The subsequent Venera missions refined their approach and technology, with Venera 2 and Venera 3 launching in 1965. Venera 2 ultimately failed to return data as its mission to Venus was unsuccessful. But Venera 3 achieved a major milestone by becoming the first spacecraft to impact another planet. Although it could not transmit data due to technical issues, it marked a significant achievement in planetary exploration. However, it was the Venera 4 mission in 1967 that offered the first successful data transmission from the Venusian atmosphere. This marked a groundbreaking moment in space exploration history as Venera 4 sent valuable information about Venus's atmosphere including its high temperatures, pressures, and composition. Scientists now had concrete data to work with, shedding light on the planet's extreme conditions. Venera 4 was followed by a series of missions that aimed to descend to Venus's surface. Venera 7, launched in 1970, achieved a remarkable feat by becoming the first spacecraft to successfully transmit data from the surface of another planet. It provided insights into the planet's temperature, pressure, and composition. This mission was a testament to the Soviet Union's unwavering determination and technological advancements in planetary exploration. Subsequent Venera missions continued to contribute valuable information about Venus. Venera 9 and Venera 10, launched in 1975, delivered the first images of the Venusian surface. These images, though somewhat obscure due to the planet's thick atmosphere, provided humanity's first glimpse of the alien landscape of another world. The Venera program's success continued with missions like Venera 13 and Venera 14, launched in 1982. These missions not only sent back images of the Venusian surface, but also conducted detailed analysis of the planet's soil composition, revealing the presence of basaltic rock. This information helped scientists better understand the geology of Venus. In a remarkable display of scientific prowess, Venera 15 and Venera 16, launched in 1983, used radar to map the surface of Venus and provided detailed topographical information. These missions greatly enhanced our understanding of the planet's geology and geological history. 
Despite the significant successes of the Venera program, the harsh conditions on Venus eventually took their toll on the spacecraft. Nonetheless, the Venera missions played a vital role in advancing our understanding of Venus and contributed to the body of knowledge that continues to inform present-day research. The Venera program's accomplishments were a testament to the determination and scientific expertise of the Soviet Union. They overcame numerous challenges and setbacks to achieve historic milestones in planetary exploration. The data and images returned by these missions have provided invaluable insights into the nature of Venus and have shaped our understanding of terrestrial planets in our solar system. In conclusion, the Soviet Union's Venera program was a remarkable chapter in the history of space exploration.